Hello everyone, Wasim with Neoseeker here and welcome to another video review. So what we have today is the Zotac Z-Box Gaming Mini PC and it's the uh, from their E-Series, the Magnus EN1060. Now Zotac have been providing really good um, mini PCs that are capable of actually gaming uh, and like pushing games at really decent uh, frames per second for, for gaming purposes while being very small. So we, the most notorious ones basically were the um, Magnus EN uh, 980 and 970. Although this one keeps the same design as the EN 970, the EN 980, uh, it was a, a completely different beast. It has water cooling and all that. So maybe we will get a Magnus EN 1080 down the road with water cooling too and everything, but you know, for now, we have the Magnus EN 1060, which has a GTX uh, 1060 inside, and the Magnus EN 1070 with a GTX 1070 inside, obviously. Alrighty, so, um, mini PCs. When, when we talk about gaming, you know, you can build a fairly compact system by grabbing a, a mini ITX chassis, you put your parts inside, you pick, you know, the right... Uh, the right products and you end up with a fairly fairly small uh, computer however uh, as small as it can be uh, it can't be that small and we'll see we'll see what i'm talking about in a moment when i open the box now zotac seems to have found the right uh, formula for making a, a mini pc that's very compact and that's very capable in terms of gaming so well let's do a quick unboxing and then we'll, we'll take it for a spin and we'll see what it's capable of. So, the box, really quickly, so what does Zotac say? They say it's a powerful, game-ready design to push the limit of your VR experience. Okay, well, VR per se, it's not mature enough right now, honestly. They call it like there's actually gaming in VR because, well, that's just the, the state of the... Um, state of the industry really so hopefully within the next couple years we'll see actual triple a titles in vr with better optimization and better performance but we'll push it through the steam vr test and see what it says okay so this is the e-series again a magnus en 1060 and what we're looking at today is a bare bone system so because it's a bare bone system you have to provide your own uh, memory, storage, and operating system. Now, this is the one I'm looking at today. However, you, uh, Zotac has available the Magnus EN 1060 Plus and then Magnus EN 1060 with Windows 10. Now, the Plus version will have the uh, memory and the storage already installed and the Windows 10 version as the name suggests, we'll have the hardware installed and a copy of Windows 10 running already. Um, the other side of the box, let me just push it like this a little bit. So we have the specifications and let's go through them while we're at it. So uh, in terms of processor, we have the Intel i5 6400T quad core processor, 2.2 gigahertz. Uh, stock and then it boosts to 2.8 gigahertz very decent processor for gaming really so and it's it's a good choice for a small form factor like this just to keep the, the whole heat and thermal output basically um, uh, checked and in terms of graphics of course uh, we have the GTX 1060 with 6 gigabit of uh, GDR5 and then internal expansion. So this system here, it supports two DDR4 uh, so dim slots. And we'll check that out in a second. And 1866, 2133 megahertz. And we have one M.2 SSD PCIe X4 or SATA slot. So 22, 42, 22, 60, 22, 80. Those are the... Um, the sizes basically of the different M.2 available uh, drives. And then we have one 2.5 inch SATA, SATA 3 basically, either mechanical or SSD. And then in terms of networking, we have dual gigabit LAN, uh, AC, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.0, a card reader, and then 
audio output, input output, uh, USB 3.1 PC, USB 3.0, USB 2.0, HDMI display port, and the power supply is rated at 19.5 volts, 180 watts, and then the dimensions. We'll take a look at that in more detail in a second. So, of course, this one here, Windows 10 ready, OS not included because it's a bare bone system. Let's take a quick look at the sides here. Very, very cool, very cool packaging. Mini PC or gaming powerhouse. Why not both? Of course, <laughs> this is what it's doing. Yeah, so VR ready, DDR4 memory, 4K, AC Wi-Fi again, all some marketing stuff. The other side, there isn't really much. Magnus EN 1060 with some kind of anime looking mech on the background. Then on the back, we have more marketing stuff. So VR ready, of course. GeForce GTX graphics, DDR4, USB 3.1, PCI X4 M.2, okay. And we have a picture of the product itself. Well, let's not waste time and get down to it. Open the box without knocking off my camera. All right, there we go. Okay, so we have this little pouch, uh, Zotac Z-Box, creators of the original mini PC. Honestly, I'm, I'm not sure if, uh, if anybody else is offering a, a similar product that's very small with desktop class graphics card inside. So yeah, they're the creators of the original mini PC. Kudos for them. All right, so we have a Zotac badge for your case or for your mini PC system if you want. Uh, this is the warranty card. So for Americas and Canada, we have two years of warranty. That's nice, two years, better than one. And then we have a driver installation. What is this? Okay, all right. So you have a DVD in case you want to use an external DVD or Blu-ray drive, or, and this is very, very smart and very appreciated, I guess. Um, this is a USB flash drive with the drivers already uh, in it. So we just plug it in and if you don't have internet access or whatever uh, to download the actual uh, drivers, you can use this. Now with Windows 10, mostly you won't really need to, to do anything. Windows 10 is very good at uh, finding the drivers for you. but this is really nice so you have a usb flash drive for the drivers because the system does not have a uh, dvd player okay now what else we have here this is some marketing stuff for zotac products and this is their pci express ssd storage it's nice and then we have a, oh, this is like all the, the, the Z-Box or the, the Zotac Mini PC series here we have. C-Series, B-Series, P-Series, O-Series, look like a baseball. And then the M-Series and the R-Series. And I know there's more series because on the back, of course, we have the E-Series, which, um, one of them we're looking at today. That's the Magnus. And then the S series, which is Zotac's Steam Machine uh, lineup. And there's the Steam controller. Yeah, the original mini PC. Perfect, so we get a quick start guide. Um, quick start guide. Looks nicely illustrated. I highly suggest to take a look at this stuff especially if you're not used to, to dealing with bare bone systems. And then you have a user's manual, nice and clean. I like that they add clear illustrations. Again, I highly suggest to take a look at this when you're installing your, your hardware. However, if you stick with me, you won't need that because I'll show you exactly what you need to do. So let's put this stuff away and keep going. So we have a Wi-Fi antenna, 2.4, 2.5 gigahertz, 
that's good. And we have the power brick. So this is also a good thing because they, they took the whole power circuitry out of the system itself. That will help with the heat and everything. And it, it gives them a chance to make the system more compact. So we have the, our 180 watt rated uh, power brick here. I'll just put it on the side for now. And our power cord that goes with that. Okay, take this tray out and we get to the good stuff. All right, let me take it out. And put this in the box. And I'm going to throw the box away. Ouch. All right, and there we go. So this is the Zotac Magnus EN 1060. Um, in terms of size, we're looking at 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters by 6 centimeters. Uh, very compact. It's, it's a very small. It's not heavy at all. And um, it, looks, it looks very... It, it has a simple design. So it's black. There's no, nothing flashy, no weird uh, logos or whatever, just the, the Zotac circle, I guess, in there, which is very nice. So you want to put this in your living room or somewhere else, it will blend in, you know, it's black. Most TVs are black. I've never seen a, a blue or a yellow TV myself. Um, and yeah, it's, it's very, very sleek, I would say. Alrighty, so the front, what do we got? We have uh, the power button here that will light up orange when it's, uh, when it's powered up. The Zotac logo, the card reader, SDHC, SDXC and the rest. Uh, we have the uh, power, Wi-Fi and storage LEDs here. A USB 3.1 port, microphone, headset and a USB 3.1 Type-C port. Now, this side here, there's nothing really, it's plain. And then the other side, on the other side, <laughs> we have a vent and a Kensington lock if you want to secure your um, investment. Now, on the back, this is where it gets interesting. So, from the left, we have our power, uh, power plug, a nice cutout for the... Um, what it seems to be from the color there, it looks like a copper uh, heatsink, huge copper heatsink, that's nice. And then we have two USB 2.0, two USB 3.0, two HDMI 2.0 ports, and two Display Port 1.3 ports. And of course, we have our two uh, gigabit LAN uh, ports and the Wi Fi antenna uh, plug. Now, since this is a bare bones system, we're going to need to get inside and install some stuff because it doesn't come with memory and it doesn't come with storage. And of course, it doesn't come with Windows. So after installing the parts, you're going to have to install your own operating system for you to get a fully functional uh, mini PC and play some games, do some streaming, whatever you want, really. Okay, so to open this thing here, just use the thumb screws right there. And just take them out. One, two. And the little dimple here, and just hold, push it out a little bit, just a little bit. And it will slide, and then we can take the cover off. Okay, I'm going to turn it a little bit just to give you a better view and yeah maybe put the camera down a little bit just bear with me for a second all right that looks better okay so um, right off the bat you can see you know, the uh, the processor socket right there with a back plate probably holding the whole uh, heatsink in there and here you can see it, it says memory void if seal broken so if you try to get in there 
The other side, it's a no-go. Zotag does not want you to go there. Leave it alone. Now, on this side here, um, as we can see, we can install, we will have to install our memory uh, kit. And here we have the um, 2.5 inch um, SATA SSD or uh, mechanical drive. And here we have our M.2 connector. So we'll start with the hardware we're going to use. So in terms of memory, we're going to be using these really nice G-Skill Ripjaws uh, DDR4 2400 megahertz SODIMS. Uh, thank you very much to our friends at G-Skill for, uh, for the memory. Um, they look really nice, so let's take them out. Easy. Then you have another G-Skill badge. Go beyond limits. Yay. All right. So one, put it right here. And next one. It's not fun working behind the camera, let me tell you. All right. And for the M.2 slot, I have a Patriot Ignite uh, M.2 SSD, 480 gigs. Um, very small form factor, very tiny for what it holds. And yeah, so we're gonna use that one. And then for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna install the, another Patriot product, which is the Ignite uh, 480 gig, uh, 2.5 inch SSD. Now, for the review, um, I'm gonna install this just to show you how it's done, but I'm only going to use the, um, the M.2 drive in there to do my testing because, well, I don't really need two drives in there. Okay, first things first with the memory. So it's really easy, really easy stuff here. You're gonna just make sure that the notch in the memory lines up with the, with the slots here. You just put it in at a slight angle, 45 degrees as they, as they say in the, in the literature and then you push it down gently until those two kind of clips will just kind of hold it in place and it's not going anywhere. Oops, almost knocked off my thumb screws. Now the other one, it looks like it has to be installed the other way around because that's how the notch matches. If I try to do it the same way as I did the other one, you can see it, it won't go in because it doesn't line up. So it has to be like this. Same thing. Put it in. Slight angle. And then all the way down until it clicks. And there you go. So our sodiums are installed. They're secured. We're good to go. For the SSD or 2.5 inch uh, drive. So we remove this little thumb screw and then you get a plastic caddy that has small teeth here to hold the drive in place. So let me just turn this like this. You see here, you have the connector. So you just make sure that you hold your drive in a way that your drive will line up with the connectors. Put it in inside the caddy. Make sure the little teeth go inside the little holes. There you go. Making sure everything is lined up properly. Very easy process. So there you go. Every teeth there is in its hole. Again, at a slight angle, make sure you line up the, the connectors. Then you push it slightly in. It's in place as easy as that. And then we put back the thumb screw. And since it's a thumb screw, I would suggest to, you know, give it a nice twist. Because this thing is going to be inside the system once it's fully assembled. And if this loosens up and it's just, you know, kicking around inside there, it might short something and we don't want that. Alrighty. Now, for our Patriot Ignite M2, which is an M.2 
SSD, I'm gonna install it here. Now, this one is a 2280 uh, form factor, which is the longest basically available. So it goes there. And if you can see, I don't know if you can see it here, that we have 42, 60, and 80, which have the different length of available M.2 drives. So since ours is the longest one, we're gonna have to remove a couple screws just to make it fit. So let me grab my trusty screwdriver while holding this thing from behind the camera. Lots of fun. Okay, so we'll remove the one for the 60, just because we don't need it. Let's make sure to keep it around somewhere. And I think you can just put it in here so you don't lose it. There you go, it's lower than that, so put it there so you don't lose it, that's really neat. And then before installing your SSD, just remove the other screw, put it away for now. And then with the M.2 drives, same concept, at a slight angle, make sure it lines up and there's a little kind of little um, plastic bit in the in the connector there that won't let you install it the wrong way so if you if I try do it like this it's not going in okay in most cases with m.2 the sticker will be facing you so again slight angle push it in put it in there it will hang in there on its own but we don't want it to be like that we want it to be completely flat just so it doesn't touch anything and just push it in gently and then with the screw we secure it in place now there you go so we have everything installed uh, we put our G-Skill, Ripjaws, DDR4, Sodims our Ignite uh, 480GB 2.5 inch uh, SSD and our Ignite M2 which is an M.2 um, drive from Patriot, both of them. Okay, so that should be it. We, we don't really need to do anything more in here because the CPU is in, already installed, um, video card is already installed, and well, if we had to install that, well, what's the point of buying something like this? Okay, now to put everything back in place, just make sure you reorient it with the back of the system towards you. And then we have kind of mini rails in there, just the same, the same way we took it out, we're going to put it back in. So just to find where everything lines up, there you go, and then slight push towards the back, and it's done. Now, it has enough, um, it has enough hold on its own, however, we have the thumb screws just to secure everything in place and not have to worry about the bottom kind of sliding or falling when we're moving the system around. Okay, so one and two. There you go. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install my Wi-Fi antenna. There you go, and you have a Zotac Magnus EN 1060 system ready for Windows and for some uh, gaming. Alrighty, so I'm gonna take this um, to the station downstairs and install Windows, run some benchmarks, uh, do some testing, have a feel of it, and I'll be back to let you guys know what I think about it. Just stay tuned. All right, so I've been using the system for a few days and I must say I'm very impressed with the uh, Zotac e Magnus EN1060. So uh, before I start talking about performance and heat and all that, just to give you a little bit of a perspective, this is the GTX 1060 Founders Edition and right next to it we have the uh, Magnus EN1060 and in matter of size, you know, if we 
basically it's just almost twice as big as the card itself and that's about it and the card is actually longer a little bit so yeah there's one of these inside there although the um, the, uh, the, uh, the 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 graphics uh, chip is running at a slightly lower uh, speeds than the uh, founders edition so there's that however um, in terms of installing windows everything went smoothly didn't have any issues I just used a uh, USB uh, drive to install Windows 10 that went um, pretty fast and without any issues so after that I installed some software a few games and I have my list right here let me just grab it okay yeah so as I told you earlier the power button will light up orange when the system is functioning so yeah it looks pretty pretty nice it's it's discreet there's not much uh, to it there it's not gonna blind you if you're watching a movie or playing in a dark room um, in terms of heat to the touch it just feels a little bit warm um, nothing nothing to worry about and while I was installing software and doing some testing I just kept an eye on the temperatures so the CPU um, never went past 60 degrees uh, even under load and the video card on well, the GTX 1060 in there it got all the way up to 76 degrees sometimes so pretty high but that that being said uh, there's no noise whatsoever this thing is dead silent like whisper quiet all that you know marketing jargon you can apply it in here you have to really get down and be be next to it to hear a little a little whoosh of the fans inside even under load so Zotac did a good job and optimizing I guess the the algorithm of uh, the fans inside now I, I checked the BIOS you can't really do much you can you can move temperatures up and down and change the uh, the fan profile a little bit but I don't think it will affect the performance that much on the long run however I'm, I'm very noise sensitive myself and <clears throat> I like it it's very quiet it won't be it won't be audible at all uh, in a gaming room or a, on a desk in your office or whatever so it's not gonna it's gonna cause any noise uh, at all um, in terms of performance so I ran I ran some uh, 3d mark uh, benchmarks so skydiver we had a score of 17,812 points uh, fire strike 8072 fire strike extreme 4671 and then fire strike ultra 2485 now um, these benchmarks the results you see here might not seem like a lot compared to other configurations however keep in mind that what we got in there is an i5 6400t that's basically the choice of the hardware is to keep temperatures and noise in check while providing decent gaming experience which we'll take a look right now so i ran some actual gaming benchmarks and for example um, ashes of the singularity at high settings uh, we got 48 uh, frames per second as average and rise of the tomb raider again high uh, preset uh, it's called 83 frames per second average the division we got 68 frames per second at the high uh, preset and then the witcher 3 um, high setting um, I turned Nvidia hair works off just to level off the field a little bit and we got 60 a solid 60 frames per second at that preset which is pretty impressive for a system this size so I managed to get a really nice gaming experience no noise whatsoever um, there wasn't really that much heat output as I told you, you know, some other systems you just touch it and it's burning hot this thing is just warm to the touch uh, when it's 
when it's under load or in, during a gaming session and the noise is kept to a minimum. So yeah, there you go. Um, the Zotac Magnus EN 1060, a very small form factor, very tiny gaming system that's capable of providing, you know, um, a, a really good gaming experience. Although it's not comparable, for example, to, I don't know, one of, like my main gaming system has a, an i7 uh, 6700K with a GTX 1080 and all that. However, that's water cooled and I have a ton of fans in a big case. This is very small, very discreet, provides a very, very good gaming experience. And it's not noisy and it doesn't burn in terms of uh, thermal output. So, um, what you might ask, well, if you want one of these, what are we looking at in terms of dollars? Well, I did not get an MSRP um, from Zotac yet. So the video would be, would be up uh, in a few days. So if by then I get any update, I will let you guys know. Otherwise, I would expect, I don't know, if I would, if it would be to throw a number in there, let say something that would make sense for a bare bone system where you have to supply your own um, memory, your own storage, and your own operating system. I'd say for for this uh, for this for the specs of this system, something around the eight hundred dollars will be decent, uh, considering that really what you're looking at here is a very small form factor that you will, you will never be able to build this from scratch and get it down to this actual size and have the, per, like the performance to, to heat to silent ratio that we get with the Zotac uh, Magnus EN 1060. So overall, um, very satisfied, a very nice device, uh, performs great. Uh, very quiet. Again, I stress on that. It's just really quiet. Um, other than that, the other uh, functionalities I put it through, I actually, you know, I used it to to do some photo editing and uh, installed Office on it too. So all that stuff really, you know, the, 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 the configuration we have here is more than capable of running it without any issues at all. So your, your average computing uh, needs will be met and it's also a very very capable gaming machine so that being said um, thank you very much for watching and uh, see you next time